Lisa, how are you doing? I'm great, Dr. Kiltz. How are you? Spectacular. Wonderful. It's a great day today. Lots of wonderful information to share in the world. Every day is a great day. You're right. And uh, I was thinking a little bit this morning about living each day with uh, faith, yes, not hope, and um, blessed, mm -hmm. not luck. Absolutely. And so when you know that we are both blessed and live with faith, amazing things unfold every day. It truly can when you place that trust in it that it's going to be all right. It, yeah, always have to place that trust because these challenges that we go through and uh, we all go through them every day in life and, and here we are talking about fertility mm -hmm. which obviously is a very, very important part yes. of our lives and um, very challenging and I always say have something that you can use every day, a tool mm -hmm. to help you with the process not necessarily through the process, because we think we got to get through this. Mm -hmm. Really, what we need to do is learn to, to participate in, yes. participate in the process, in a more loving, generous, kind way, mm -hmm. even with gratitude. Some days oh, to what yes. is hard. So, faith mm -hmm. and blessed. And what are we going to talk about today? Well, we've been seeing a lot of questions, especially. Um, online and in some discussions about using PGD for when you have a failed cycle. Maybe you don't necessarily know if there is a genetic factor that you're screening for, but any benefits or merits to using PGD if maybe you've had one or two failed IVFs? Well, PGD, pre-implantation genetic diagnosis, mm -hmm. uh, and there are lots of new terms being used in our ability to test the chromosomes of an embryo prior to them being placed in the uterus. Yes. We believe that 50% of uh, embryos are likely abnormal mm -hmm. in any cycle, uh, and we know that the majority of embryos that fail to implant or miscarry are chromosomally abnormal. Yes. I believe that PGD, or genetic testing of the embryos, are going to become the standard. Mm -hmm. The challenge right now is because there's an added cost factor, yes. and and placing an embryo in the uterus allows nature to define itself in so mm -hmm. many ways. With that said, I believe that testing embryos will be and can be very helpful in giving you an answer uh, and, and potentially helping you select those one or two embryos yes. out of that cohort of embryos that is going to give you the best chance mm -hmm. for having a baby. The challenge is when you biopsy any embryo, a single cell from, from an embryo may not always be the right answer, uh, and so we have to always be careful with that. I always say nature really knows what he or she or it is doing in so many ways, and so it's another tool that I believe is available, will become more and more useful okay. as the cost of it comes down, mm -hmm. but certainly for many people that the cost is worth what it is and yes. doing it to something valuable I think that we should think about. So currently the main ways of doing PGD are to biopsy the embryos on day three, okay. so a single cell out of the embryo mm -hmm. and you test it for its chromosomes, uh, the 23, mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and looking for an abnormal count of those. Now yes. uh, the other and then allow it to grow to the blastocyst stage, mm -hmm. day five or six and some days day seven and then pick those embryos that have blood mm -hmm. grown and are of normal chromosomes to transfer. The other way to do it is to biopsy at the trophectoderm or the blastocyst stage and biopsy the trophectoderm. It's a newer technique which currently most of us require freezing those embryos. Okay. So you have to freeze them and then wait for another fresh a natural cycle. Mm. Uh, which can also be helpful, and there's some evidence suggesting that the stimulated cycle may also inhibit the success a little bit. Interesting. So we're always changing, we're always looking at, at, at new and different ways, but I think those ways are available, mm -hmm. not that we should be doing them on everyone, yeah. but it's certainly something to discuss and look at in increasing your chances for success in the process. Very interesting. Well, thank you very much for sharing this information. As I know, our clients are often reading and trying to understand as much as they can and sometimes they may come across information of what one center may be doing or maybe they're coming back after a second or third cycle and maybe we change a medication and so it's great for us to realize that the science is also changing, our understanding of it is changing and every client is unique so maybe we may do a cycle one way for one cycle 
and then we do the medications or a different protocol the next cycle. So we appreciate you sharing the knowledge. No, no it's my, my pleasure. And this is uh, so important mm-hmm. that uh, patience and persistence and changing it up, do something oh, different. Yeah. And so there are different protocols and medications. Mm-hmm. There, there, there's the biopsy of the embryos. There's uh, the endometrial biopsy. There's other factors you can add to the process. I like to think of it as a blanket approach. Yes. But the one thing I've seen that's the most powerful Patience, persistence, faith, and gratitude, the key to this whole process. Great. Well, thank you so much. pleasure as always. And we will see you next week with great more information. Awesome. God, God bless. Enjoy the day. Thank you.